Warning. All displays of negativity will be deliciously repackaged. And promptly returned to sender. Only good vibes allowed beyond this point. Now if you're ready, come on in. Welcome to Fizz Feet Conversations. What's going on, Champagne Gang? Fizz fam, confidant. <laughs> Welcome to another Fizz Feed conversation. And I need y'all to get in here because I told y'all, I told you, this is just July. We have into November for some more foolishness to take place. So we've had an attempted assassination of a former sitting president. We've had President Biden dropping out the ring. We've had a confirmed case of the Black Death in Colorado. Because see, y'all don't understand, there's more than one way to fight a war. Wars aren't always fought fist to guns on the ground and in the air. Sometimes wars are fought with the air. Mm -hmm. And now we have four bombers intercepted near Alaska from China and Russia. Come on. Yeah. Check this out. The North American Aerospace Defense Command, also known as NORAD, says it intercepted two Russian and two Chinese bombers flying near Alaska. The intercept was carried out by U.S. and Canadian fighter jets. NORAD says the bombers remained in international airspace and were not seen as a threat. China and Russia have confirmed that they had conducted a joint air patrol over the Bering Sea, which divides Russia and Alaska. NORAD says it will continue to monitor competitor activity near North America and meet, quote, presence with presence. This was not a surprise to us. We uh, closely monitored uh, uh, these aircraft, uh, tracked the aircraft, intercepted the aircraft, uh, and uh, which demonstrates that our, you know, our forces are at the ready all the time and we have uh, we have very good uh, surveillance uh, capabilities and this is the first time that we've seen these two countries fly together they didn't um, enter our airspace uh, i think the closest point of approach was about 200 miles off the off of our uh, uh, coast so uh, but this is a thing that uh, that we track very closely we're able to intercept and it and if it happens again if there's any kind of a challenge from from any direction uh, I have every confidence that uh, that uh, Northcom and NORAD uh, will will be at the ready and will be able to intercept. In terms of the relationship between uh, Russia and China, this is a, a relationship that we have been concerned about throughout. Most uh, uh, mostly because we're concerned about China providing uh, uh, support to Russia's uh, illegal and unnecessary war in Ukraine. And we've seen evidence of, of that, uh, and uh, we would hope that uh, that would uh, that would cease going forward. We'll see what happens and how this relationship continues to to develop. Uh, we will we'll remain focused on protecting the homeland here. And again, I applaud the efforts of Northcom and our great airmen, uh, who are always at the ready. As to whether or not our uh, adversaries are testing us at this particular time, they're always testing us, and and. Uh, uh, that's no surprise uh, to any of us. We, uh, we see activity in the north uh, uh, on a number of occasions, and we are always at the ready to, uh, to address that activity. So y'all listen, we got to talk about it. So the North American Aerospace Defense Command or NORAD had quite an eventful Wednesday, apparently. So they intercepted two Russian and two Chinese bombers flying near Alaska. Now, this was supposedly the first time these two countries have been intercepted while working together. Now, these bombers were still in international airspace within Alaska's Air Defense Identification Zone, or ATIS. So they weren't seen as a direct threat, apparently. NORAD, which includes both the U.S. and Canada, intercepted the Russian Tu-95 Bear and Chinese H-6 bombers. They didn't come into U.S. or Canadian airspace, so again, they said it wasn't an immediate danger. What's interesting is this was the first time those H-6 bombers, which are based on older Soviet designs, had showed up in Alaska's 80s. The intercept was handled by U.S. F-16 and F-35 fighter jet and Canadian CF-18 fighter jets with some support aircraft joining in as well. So on Thursday, China responded. China's defense ministry shared that the Chinese and Russian air forces 
organized this joint patrol over the Bering Sea as a part of their annual cooperation plan, allegedly. Zhang Jiogang, a spokesperson for the ministry, said this was their eighth patrol since 2019, and they're aiming at boosting cooperation and trust between the two Air Force. He emphasized that this wasn't targeted at any third parties and complied with the international law. The Russian Defense Ministry also added that their patrol flew over the northern Pacific Ocean, including the narrow Bering Strait between Russia and Alaska. They practiced cooperation throughout the patrol, which lasted over five hours, with Russian Su-30SM and Su-35S fighter jets also participating. They even released a video showing the bombers flying together and the intercept by the U.S. and Canadian aircraft. Russia insists, again I say, this exercise was a part of their 2024 military cooperation plan and wasn't aimed at any third country. When asked if this was Russia and China testing, quote unquote, the U.S. following President Biden's decision to pull out of the 2024 race, Defense Secretary Lord Lloyd Austin said they're always testing us. He assured everyone that the U.S. was fully prepared, closely monitoring, tracking, and intercepting the aircraft, showing off our top-notch surveillance capability. Austin also mentioned that the closest the Russian and Chinese aircraft got to the U.S. was about 200 miles off the coast. He reiterated that the U.S. is concerned about the growing ties between Russia and China, especially considering China's support for Russia and Ukraine. Austin assured us that our defenses are always ready for any challenge. Russian flights into Alaska's Aidens happens regularly, but the involvement of Chinese aircraft is new. So back in March, General Gregory, y'all these names blow me, Gwilat of U.S. Northern Command warned that China was pushing further north into the Arctic and expected to see their aircraft there soon. He expressed concerns over China's increasing presence in the region, particularly cooperating with Russia. Senator Dan Sullivan from Alaska also weighed in, warning that these joint Russia-Chinese incursions near Alaska are likely to continue. He called Alaska the front line of authoritarian aggression from these two countries. Feels like something straight out of a spy thriller, doesn't it? Listen, y'all, nobody's gonna be able to tell me that bombers with nuclear capabilities flying this close to the U.S. is not a threat. You can't tell me that. That's like somebody driving past your house with a gun aimed at your house and just because they don't fire and just because they're on the street that that's not a threat to your home. I told y'all this is election time and this is still July. We haven't even made it out of July yet and now we got bombers close to U.S. soil and they want us to believe that this is not a cause for concern. China and Russia together near U.S. soil 200 miles off the coast. I don't know about y'all but that is way too close for comfort for me. It's especially with somebody I'm beefing with. This is what I'm gonna say about this situation. Y'all better learn how to arm yourself, protect your home. Y'all better act like there has been an outbreak of the walking dead and have something in every room of your house because we don't know what's coming next. We got the election going on and they just want us to pick one. Pick one what? And on top of that, you clearly have individuals out to start a race war. You don't believe me? All right, press pause. Check this out real quick. Tonight, a loving father is sharing the terrifying moment someone broke into his home and attacked his children. And let's just say dad made the suspect regret that decision. Mm, big time. Police say the suspect is in custody and will be charged. ABC 10's Roxanne Elias has the story. Went around, ducked down, looked, and then just rushed through the door. Bobby Tucker says a stranger who was screaming and growling came into his home and attacked two of his children around 5.30 p.m. Thursday. He attacked my 14-year-old son from the back. He jumped on him, choking him out to the ground, and then he moved on to my 11-year-old. When I came out, he was standing about right here over the top of my son. Tucker, who works as a security guard, says he was in the back of the house with his youngest son when he heard the commotion. He rushed out from his hallway and saw the man hitting his 11-year-old son. I admit I blanked out for a while, probably scared my kids too, 
because I, I just kept hitting the guy, hitting the guy, and I could hear them saying someone called 911. Citrus Heights police responded within five minutes and took the man into custody. He was out cold, unresponsive. The paramedics tried to get him to wake up and respond. He, he was just out. Police aren't releasing the man's identity yet and can't say if he was on drugs or had mental health problems. The father of four says his door was unlocked at the time because his children had just taken the trash out. He later posted these photos of the man, one of him entering his home and the other with him being taken out on a stretcher. He definitely picked the wrong house to come into. Tucker says he wants this to serve as a warning to other homeowners. Definitely get you something inside your home to protect yourself whether it's mace or firearm. The father of four says his focus now is getting his sons through the trauma of being attacked. Looking into try and get them at least a little bit of therapy so they can talk about it and not be afraid and scared because your home is supposed to be your sanctuary. In Citrus Heights, Roxanne Elias, ABC 10. So I know y'all don't think it's by accident that this white man got into this black man's house and started to choke out his children. The level of I'll take beneath the jail for 200 Alex that would have been unleashed. See, he was nice. He was so nice because I think this man left breathing <laughs> even though he was passed out. Ain't no way. I'm walking in a room and a stranger done came up in my humble abode and proceeded to attack my children? Baby, no, orange is the new black. I'm sorry, it is. Orange is the new black for me. And I will be waiting for the police with a blunt, a glass of champagne, a smile, and confession letter in hand when they got there. Because what? I'm telling y'all, now is not the time for ignorance is bliss. Now is the time to pay attention to what's going on, pay attention to your surroundings, when you're driving, if you have to stop at the gas station, if you have to stop at the store, pay attention to what's going on around you because baby, something wicked this way comes. I cannot make this up. See, we so busy throwing ass and shaking ass and paying attention to some of these celebrities who have seemingly lost their damn minds that we're not even paying attention to what's going on around us. I'm starting to believe somehow that these celebrities are the distraction that these celebrities are sent to keep us distracted from what's really going on in the world we had a former sitting president almost assassinated and then oh i almost forgot about the whole microsoft hack unhack that supposedly happened with the security update that they still cannot convince me that they weren't attacked that was a cyber attack if i've ever seen one and now after a cyber attack all of a sudden, we have Russian and Chinese bombers near U.S. territory? Come on, y'all. You remember what I said in my other video? Piss rain. You get it? Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this. Hit that like and subscribe button. Consider joining the channel. Joining the Champagne Gang and the Fizz fam. Hit that subscribe and notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into whichever sector we jump into for another show. Consider supporting the channel. The Cash App is on the screen. Thank you for joining us for another Fizz Feed conversation. Our opinion, their story. Until next time, see you soon. Fizz Feed Conversations.